year. So I've jumped a bit. I decided prayer was a priority. While I was praying, I remembered my mom's ability to pray for miracles to happen. My siblings and I, you know, we believed my mom had a direct line to God and that if, that if she prayed, everything and anything could happen. So as this thought crystallized in my mind, I decided to change my prayer request from God help me come out of this alive and in one piece to God hear my mother's prayer because I know she was praying for me. By the way, this was my prayer the whole weekend and uh, I managed to get released <laughs> at some point. So my experience in Karyobangi changed my life forever. I believe my mother not only prayed for my release, but also prayed for me to get married because I was taking long. <laughs> this miracle was eventually granted uh, and within two years I was engaged and married. Um, March 25th, 2011 was the, the date of my marriage to my beautiful wife here. <laughs> and we have three amazing kids, Malaika, Thayo and uh, Wanjiro. Uh, Nemo and her father, the late J.G. Waweru, had an enviable relationship with my mom. Uh, J.G. Waweru made several trips to share a meal with my mom and my dad at their home in Loresho. J.G. Waweru would call me with a lot of excitement to let me know how hospitable my mother had been when he visited. Nemo also visited mom regularly at home where they would talk for hours on end. When my mom was admitted on December 4th, 2023 at the Nairobi Hospital, Nemo visited and prayed by her side as often as she could. My mom always asked about her grandchildren when I visited at home. She always in inquired about which church they attended and how they were faring in school. When it was time to be part, we'd always pray for her grandchildren. She also reminded me regularly that her father the late Ruben Kiriri, would have been happy to know that his great-grandchildren are in schools that he only could have dreamt about during his time. I also remember my mom for being patient, consistent, and organized. She kept time and always encouraged me to be the best version of myself. As we lay you to rest, my support, my light, my dear mom, I remember my routine had been formed over the years. I would visit her regularly on Saturdays and at any time when I would be free. So I wonder if I'll find myself in that same routine, driving home, to visit and talk to a mother who has moved on to her next destination. Thank you, Mom, for your strength, love, and kindness. I'll miss you dearly. Thank you. Good morning. God is good and all the time. Uh, my name is Wairimo Keriri, um, but mommy referred to me as Nimo or Kanimo. I don't have words to express what she meant to me, but I was forced to write a tribute because Wamboi was on my neck about tributes. So it will be very brief, but I have so much love for our departed mother. You will forever be loved and missed. Your humbleness, patience, and humility I will emulate, or rather try to. Rest in peace, mommy. Say hello to dad and mom. I love you. Good afternoon, church. Thank you for coming to stand with us this afternoon. I will read um, my mother, the Proverbs 31 woman. Mami, it seems so surreal for me to be writing this tribute for you. I don't think I ever truly believed that you would not be here with us. Um, I cannot imagine life without you, without your presence, without your love, without your prayers. I have so many memories of your love, um, your generosity, your commitment to God. Um, I remember when I would fall sick, I would stay home from school because you did not want, want me to be alone. Um, uh, uh, and you, and um, you don't want me to stay at home alone. You take me along on all your errands from industrial area to buy flour, sugar, and then to Gatina wholesalers to, in Limuru to deliver the, in, uh, at the shop. Then we would go to whichever Bible study or prayer meeting, and there could be three or four that day. 
growing up, I did not have a good appetite. So I remember you would wake me, you would uh, wake up early on school days, prepare something that I could eat before school. It was usually chips and sausage. I always ate that. In addition, you invited the late Miss Wajenga, many of you ladies from the rest will remember her, to lay hands on me because of my lack of appetite. Because for you, every issue, big and small, would be dealt with by praying over it. Mommy, you loved us so, so much. You loved me so much, and I loved you. Your fellowship and your prayer life was so important to you. You never ate a meal or went to bed without praying first. I always knew that no matter what, I could count on you to pray for me, and you always prayed for me and for all of us. Mommy, you were present and available for me throughout the many seasons of my life. You came to Switzerland for both my graduations. You celebrated my marriage and always prayed for me, especially when I was pregnant with my twins, Katano and Kavata. And you were so concerned that I could not uh, manage to carry a twin pregnancy. So you were constantly praying for me with Mrs. Gatimo all the time, laying hands on my stomach. <laughs> uh, you also loved my extended family. You always asked how Mama's mom was doing. You cared so much about those relationships. Mommy, I will forever be in awe of how strong you were through your illness. I remember when you were diagnosed with cancer. And so this was after a few years of having Parkinson's. So I was, um, I was very angry with God. I struggled with, pr uh, with, uh, with praying, but not you, mommy. Each time we went for chemo sessions, you wanted us to pray because they, before they started. You, remind, you remained so faithful to him and always reminded me that even then he remained God. You would say, Kahaki, he's still on the throne. And I have a little story about this uh, because uh, when she was going through treatment, her Parkinson's would make, well, part of the Parkinson's that you get uh, dementia, so you forget. So we would pray uh, when we get to the hospital. Then a few minutes later, she, she would ask us to pray again. Then we would pray again. Then a few minutes later, she would say, Kahaki ni tohoe. Then we would pray. So like the third or fourth time, I'd be like, eh, mommy, we already just prayed. She's like, Kahaki, gaida no gaga. God doesn't get tired, let's pray again. And so because I didn't want to be the, the person who doesn't like prayer or to show her that I wanted to be a good Christian girl, I would pray however many times <laughs> she wanted us to pray and there would be many. So that was mommy, always faithful to God. Um, okay, now I've lost where I was. Okay, I completely saw his love and favor over your life through your illness. Mommy, you are home to me, love and peace. Thank you for loving me unconditionally, for teaching me to know and love the Lord, and for teaching me the importance of prayer. Thank you for raising us surrounded with so much love from my tatas and, and my uncles and all my cousins because of the close relationship you shared with your siblings. I will miss you so much, mommy, but I know that you only left us when you knew you, we would be okay. I will love you forever, mommy. Now rest. And then there's the Proverbs 31, um, 26 to 31. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let the work, her works bring praise to the city gates. Rest in peace, mommy. Good afternoon, church. My name is Moema. Uh, for the cameras in the house, you know we get very emotional, so just hold me up, kidogo. All right, so mom, uh, we'll miss you dearly, but we also know we had to let you go. We know you have a peace and quiet confidence that your purpose on this earth was fulfilled and your work is done. If there's one thing about you that I know that we will all miss are your constant and consistent prayers. Uh, Mom, you prayed for everything, and I mean everything. Our food, our children, our homes, our marriages. Um, I think in the, in the children of Israel. All the time. In summary, I truly believe that you put us in prayer in all that we did, and for that I say thank you. May we learn from your actions and be half the prayer warrior that you were. We, your family from Ukambani, across the ridge. Look forward to seeing you again when we cross that bridge as we all shall. With sincere gratitude and love for knowing you for the last 27 years, your son, Mwema. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now you're beginning to understand that this is not just an MC interlude. This lady prayed, and we will pray. If we get a little late because of praying, you'll have bravely gotten late. That could be the best thing that ever happened to you. I'm going to request Mrs. Hannah Gatimo, Mrs. Margaret Kamau, and Mrs. Nesta Deuri. Please come to the front. These three ladies were part and parcel of Tatalea's support system. They love these children like their own. These children know them as their mother. And they requested that every one of them Please come over. Yeah. And hug your children. They were very, very dear to Tata. They prayed with her, prayed with them, with their children. The children call them mom, and they're very, very special. And I thought that they would read their tribute when the children are still here. Praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Hannah Gatimo. I'm a pastor at the Exploit Worship Center. This is hard for me. But I thank God that I can stand before you and talk about my best friend. Mama Jerry was connected to me by her very close friend, Mrs. Mary, the late Mrs. Mary Pavero in March 1998. Mama Jerry found me at the lowest point in my life. I was devastated by the battles of a 28-year-old marriage that had gone south. Leah saw beyond the wreckage and purposed to be God's agent of restoration and transformation in my life. Her love was overwhelming and her generosity was unmatched. She held my hand and kept me close so that I had a shoulder to lean on in my darkest times. Her home became my home and her family became my family. Her friendship helped me to restore my sense of self-worth and saved me from sinking into deep depression. The Bible speaks of angels who God sent to rescue, protect, and fight for his people. Mama Jerry was the angel that God sent to rescue me. There became my priceless mentor she taught me to rely on God and not on people. She taught me to forgive and pray for my enemies and persecutors in obedience to the word of God. Her sitting room was a kind of an altar of prayer. 
where all kinds of intercession was carried out for personal needs of our families and friends, for Kenya and the nations of the world. Leah loved God passionately. She blessed the children of Israel every time she prayed, even while praying for a meal. In Revelation 20, we read of a book in heaven, the list of all the good deeds of men and women, Leah's compassionate deeds to me and many others must be well recorded in that book. Testifying of how she fed the poor, rescued the abandoned and the traumatized, used her resources to help the sick and the helpless. I shall be eternally grateful to God for Mama Jerry. Rest in peace, my very dear friend. Good, good morning, all of you. It's afternoon. Good afternoon, all of you. God is good. And all the time, we are here because of God's sufficient in grace. I bring love from County 034 Kajiando, and I want to read Mama Kereris, as I call her, uh, a tribute. I'm Nesta Wanja Peuri, I'm a Mama Waihenya. I met Rea in 1995. We were connected by the relationship of our children, my son Waihenya and her son Kereri. In the subsequent years, I met the rest of the family, and Mama Kireli loved God and was true to her faith and prayer life. She prayed for her husband, her children, her grandchildren by name. She was humble, caring, and generally, generally shared her wisdom. There are three things I, I want to, I learned from Mama Kireli. First is to trust in God always. And you trust in God, you always bring a, a, a human angel to help you out to whatever situation you are in. And also, the second thing I is, love to, to, is, love, is to love and care for the people God has put around you, to love them unconditionally. And finally, she taught me to use the potential God has placed in me to help those people I connect with to make a an, an difference in the world God has created us to share. She, uh, she was also a great encourager and a prayer warrior. During her illness, she would quote Psalm 91 verse 1, which says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. May, may, May that prayer be fulfilled here today. You left a great legacy, Mama Kereri. Fear thee, thee well till we meet again. Blessed be to you all. Amen. Good afternoon. God is good. I there are some things I would three things I want to say about uh, my friend Leah uh, before I read my tribute. Um, her humility, a woman who knew no class, who treated everybody equally. You'd go to Mama Jerry's home and you'd find people from El Bagon and uh, she would take a lot of time introducing them to you. This one I was with her in primary school. We grew together. And um, as I was reflecting upon Mama Jerry, um, looking at my own life, there are many things that have borrowed the many years we have been friends together. Humility, hospitality, a prayer warrior. A prayer warrior who prayed for everything, as the children have said. 
the coming, whenever there was elections, I knew we would be called in that house to pray for elections. Whenever there was anything, we would be called by Mama Jerry to pray uh, for, for this nation, uh, which her heart was in this nation, especially in the pol political arena. She was a woman you cannot just write a few um, lines and say you have exhausted who, who Mama Jerry was. I'll read my tribute, and it was clipped a bit by whoever was editing. My first close interaction with, Le with Leah was, that was after I became born again in, a, in my church. She would invite me to her home and would come to visit me, and the sole purpose of our visit in each other's home was prayer. She believed in prayer and the power of prayer. I found Leah in Leah, a friend who was humble, hospitable, and when I talk about hospitable, you would either, you would actually uh, say, I'll, I'll go and see Leah for half an hour. You find yourself staying there for three hours. That is how hospitable uh, Leah was. And someone in whom I could confide in. You could tell Leah your problems, and you knew that she would take them to the Lord. She encouraged me to be some, uh, she encouraged me to join many prayer groups. You know, so, uh, when I was younger in, in faith, uh, we would leave the church and then uh, she would call me and say, Leo, there is a Chris call prayer. Uh, there is uh, the Kenya House of Prayer. And she introduced me to these prayer groups and I grew in faith and, and I grew to know the power of prayer. Leah had a passion of evangelism. Evangelism, even here as we came with her in Yara, there would be prayers evangelizing to the workers. Evangelism not only uh, within the church. And one of the ones that I, I sticks, me, I stick, sticks with me is when she ushered some of us in the church and told us that uh, we would be contributing towards um, evangelists who were in Namanga, a place called Basil, Ibisil. And then I said, how did you come to know them? It's only that uh, within the week of, of the, uh, uh, during the funeral service that an elder actually explained that this was uh, a mission which was started by the church, but I think there was some bit of a, an issue, a, a constraint where money was concerned. And Leah volunteered to continue with this mission in Ibisil, in Namanga. And I am a testimony of her coming, even the evangelist coming to her home. This was. So this was the mother of prayer, a mother of mission, a mother who loved people without Who loved us all. May she rest in the hands of God. Amen. Okay. Yes, now you can leave. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate them one more time. Our time is well spent, but it was important that the family gets to share with us this. Now we are going to go to a few other people. Honorable Mother Karua has already said something. We were expecting the Member of Parliament, Olimuru. Is here. Please, Engineer, Karibu Sana. Engineer, as you talk, we shall be praying for you that you not be tempted to ask for votes or uh, explain CDF. We are, pre we are in prayer as you talk. And then after that, we are going to have uh, Mr. Ndev Mr. Ndegwa, who is going to talk on behalf of the, he has a speech from the member of parliament, no, from the governor. So Mr. Ndegwa, you can also come closer. And uh, is His Excellency Natembe around? 
Okay, let's have those first. Guy, you turn them away. I had this year there. Who could we talk to God more than you? Wash As I was coming, I was praying that uh, I don't get into the temptation. So I stand here uh, to bring my condolences, that of my family, and uh, the larger Kirago family. And uh, for many of the people who do not know, me and uh, Titus, we just have a lot of our families on both sides of the river that is just next door here. And uh, I also bring condolences from my mom, who remembers you those days you used to be in the same primary school, but she refers you as a young, brilliant man. So I, we are here to stand with the family. We consider this family as a miracle family. Those who know the Moyas, and I have heard many people talk about him from Nairobi side, those of us who know the Moyas from the background, Truly, this is a miracle family. And no wonder Family Bank is a miracle bank. Because where we are, our families of the Kyondos and Keragos, the ones worked here as laborers, planting trees for the Mzungus who owned this place. And it truly, for us to be here, the God that Mamalea has been praying is a living God. And the challenge for us is who is the God we are praying to? I wish we can search the God that Mamalea has been praying so that we can get the blessings this family has received. So for me, I don't want to say much because I don't want to get in that temptation. But um, for you, Titus and your family, we can only pray for you, for God to stand in the gap and um, because you have been people who have been caring about others, may you and your children and the children of your children, may they find favor as they live in their lives here and now. I would be not doing well if I don't recognize the area MCA. Boy. I had somebody trying to define what area this is. We call this Rimuru East Ward. Uh, in Rimuru, and somebody tried to say in Kenya, uh, Kenya, East Africa. So uh, uh, he's our area MP, and he is the one person who takes care of this area. Uh, with me, with your permission, I have my boss in the parliament, who is also a friend of this family, and um, one who doesn't get into temptations of talking too much. And uh, because he is here, and uh, uh, he's also a member of PC, and when uh, me and him, uh, we speak in front of the Secretary General, uh, we are always very careful not to be taken out of our membership. <laughs> so uh, let me uh, ask with all the humility for MP Shongo, who is our majority leader in parliament, to come and uh, uh, give his condolences. Thank you.
Thank you, engineer, TK, and uh, your immediate family and extended family, friends, relatives, neighbors, and the Church of Christ. Good afternoon. I think when engineer prompted me to speak, he was saying I'm usually not tempted. He meant exactly the opposite. I am one of those politicians who are always tempted by a microphone. But as he said, being a Presbyterian, member number 39 of Gekambura District, Reverend PCA Musagetao Church in Gekambura Village, where the SG has fellowshiped with us, I will restrict my very brief remarks to just take this opportunity on behalf of my own family, on behalf of the people of Kikuyu, and many friends, including many friends in the National Assembly of Kenya, to convey our very heartfelt condolences to UTK, our brother, and your family. To say pole for the loss of a lady who has been described as a very loving, humble, and prayerful mother and wife to you, Chairman. And we only pray to God that as the children were reading their tributes here and remembering how she prayed for them and for the family, now listen to the ladies who spoke after speak of how she prayed even for our country, that we pray to God that our Lord Jesus Christ will come and fill in the huge void that has been left by the passing of our mom, your wife, and a mother to the people of Loresho, Limuru, and our country at large. And I don't want to say much beyond that. TK, as I convey my condolences, let me also take this opportunity to convey the condolences of His Excellency the President my brother, you know you communicated with him. And because he's out of the country, he did request me last night to make sure that I attend this funeral, represent him, and convey his condolences. Now, with much honor, I will just read his condolence message as sent to me to convey to you, Chairman, your family, and the people of this region and says a condolence message to the family of the late Lea Wanjiro Moya. Our country has lost a respected and hardworking woman. Lea Wanjiro Moya, Mamanjeri, was a responsible and caring woman and a mother to many. She was a selfless and devoted figure who served the community with great distinction. Mamanjeri was abundant in fresh ideas and thoughts that changed the lives of many people. She was prayerful, an industrious entrepreneur, and a lover for education. We celebrate the great life that she led and the fond memories that she leaves behind with us. Today we join the people of Nyara in Limuru in honoring a lady whose light will never Fed. May we be comforted by the word of the Lord in Psalms 46 1 that says, God is our refuge and strength, a very pre present help in trouble. Rest in peace, Mamanjeri, Poleni Sana, to the TK family, friends, and all relatives of Mamanjeri, signed by William Samoy Ruto, CGH. President of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you, and may God bless you.
church. Uh, TK, our good friend, uh, TK family, and the church. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Degwa Peter. I work with the county government of Kiambu as the acting county secretary. Uh, church, you allow me to introduce people who came up with us. We have our speaker, honorable speaker. We have people, uh, I think church has said we limit the speeches. Then we have the MCA, Zapatka, our MCA. I think he had been introduced. Then we have uh, Napoleon there. And is Garuya here? Okay, thank you. Then we have staff, uh, TK from the bank, uh, from the county, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I still remember good times we had with Mr. May in the bank. Uh, Parasen, our chief officer in charge of communication at PR. We have our county attorney. I think she's on the other side. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm here to represent the governor of Kiambu. Uh, my name is Peter Ndegwa, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the governor was unable to attend this function because he's out of uh, country and he he sends his sincere apologies, uh, condolences rather, and asks that you kindly allow me to read his speech. But before that, I want to mention that I've known TK since 1998, not, 1995, not 1954 like uh, Chairman uh, Kiboro, uh, but we have had a relationship with TK uh, he, before the bank became the bank, it was a building society, and I used to work with the cooperative bank, and he used to bring his checks for us to take them to the clearing house, that's the central bank. So we developed a relationship over the years. I moved from cooperative bank, I went to the county, and I found that he is one of our biggest uh, uh, supporter there, and we appreciate TK. We also bank with you heavily, and we are happy. Uh, we also meet at Parklands, he does the reverse. He swims and jogs and runs. I try to jog, try to jog, and I also try to swim. And then we can swim for a long time. And we can disappear. And we can disappear. And we can disappear. And we can disappear. We have come uh, from far together. And I'm happy to be here uh, to uh, read, send my condolences, and also read those of the His Excellency. Uh, the governor. Condolence message by His Excellency uh, Governor Dr. Kimani Wamatangi, BGH, to the family of the late honor uh, Lea Wajiro Moya, uh, delivered today. It's with deep sense of loss that I received the sad news of the death of Ms. Mrs. Lea Wanjiro Moya, the wife of uh, my friend and great son of Kiambu County, Mr. Titus Kiondo Moya popularly known as TK. Lea was a humble, kind, generous, and courageous person. She has led a illustrious life, which we all cherish. Lea's words were always her bond. She was dependable. Many of us remember her, Lea for her community work, having special interests in the welfare of women, church, and the society. It's unfortunate that we have lost such a reliable, solid, and highly accomplished woman, and a prayer warrior. Mrs. Gatimo told us yesterday she, she pray, they used to pray until, until 2 p.m. when Mo, Mr. Moya is struggling to sleep so that he can wake up to, to go and sort out the bank issues. Who prays up to 2 p.m., a.m. rather, on a normal day when there is no crusade? It's only mom. Mom, we appreciate you for the prayers that you gave to this world and uh, also to the bank we also we were told also how she used to pray for the bank to be what it is uh, today to my friend titus moya family and friends may the almighty god comfort you send his love and peace into your hearts as you mourn the demise of your beloved wife mother and grandchildren and grandmother sorry i assure you of my prayers and support as you come to terms with the death of this matriarch. My prayer and hope is that her legacy lives on through us. The community will treasure the positive 
impact she made, and her wise counsel will be greatly missed by all who sought her guidance. She was full of life, and we believe the Lord has a plan for all of us. To Leah's family, I know this is really hard for you, and we, we are praying for strength and comfort. Losing someone you love is always hard to accept, but remember, God is by your side. On behalf of the county government of Kambu, the people of Kambu, my family, and myself, we offer our sincere condolences and sympathies as we celebrate the life of Ninawa Jerry. May the almighty God grant you fortitude and courage to bear this great loss. Let us fight solace in the words of Romans 8, uh, 28, and reads, and we know that in all things good, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Eternal rest grant unto your servant, dear Lord, and let perpetual light sign upon her. May her soul, through your mercy, rest in peace. Go well, Mama Jerry. Signed, His Excellency, Governor Dr. Kimani Mamatangi, EGH, Kambu County. Thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we are now just about done and thank you very much for your indulgence. We have got some special friends that TK had requested to talk and now these will be the last ones before we invite TK. Kindly, Buana Mukombozi. Buana Mukombozi. And then there is going to be Kaviru Kenyanjui. Alright. And then we are going to have Mr. Kiforo. Buana Mukombozi, you have got two minutes. Thank you so much. I won't even take two minutes. I'll take one. Good evening, every all of you. <laughs> My name is Anjiro Mukombozi. I'm an entrepreneur and a business person in Kirinyaga. I am the biggest mirror in Kirinyaga. Nice rice mirrors and also nice digital hotel where all the time you stop or you come for holiday. I am a friend of TK. If you ask TK to, to mention his five friends, I will not miss I will be the fifth friend of TK. <laughs> and he is also my fifth friend. And as you know, when you, when you spend a day with the five friends and they become bangy friends, at the end of the night, the day, you will be the sixth taking bangy. So TK is a rich person. So in the evening or at the end of the week, I'll be rich as TK. That's also my play. Another thing, I want to talk very short and brief. You are all TK friends and TK first. Take courage, be strong. Na wea ni rafiki yangu, na nakuwambea uwe na ngufu. Na Kwanyote nyinyi marafiki tafadhali. Nyinyi ni marafiki wa TK. And you all know TK, he, he is the chairman of Family Bank. Na use that opportunity, mukiwa rafiki wa TK na familia ya TK ndiyo muwe at least customers wa Family Bank. Na kama vile munanjua, at least ni mzuri Mujue, Family Bank is the best bank. Na Ma Manjeri ameiwacha ikiwa the best in Kenya. Na pia mukiwa mukiongezea mwe customers ni muzuri. Kwa hawa machache, mungu arase roho ya Ma Manjeri pema. Na karibuni nice na moya. Na also karibuni mwe members wa Family Bank. Ni mbangi nzuri. Praise 
Praise God, the church. Praise once again. Thank you. My name is Kabiro Kinyanjui, and I came here with my wife and other members of the family to bring our condolences and our support to uh, Mr. Moya's family. I stand here this afternoon in solidarity with the family of Lea Wajiro uh, Moya, whom we fondly call Mama Jerry. And all of you stand with you to celebrate the life and the times of Mary, of uh, Lea Wajiro uh, Kiondo. Indeed, we came here to give thanks to God. Because what Lea has done, it is because God has enabled her to be what she is. She was a lady of, of uh, prayer, as we were told. She was a believer. And God worked through her to do the marvelous things which we have been told here. I want also to acknowledge that um, Leah was a, a Peter, and she grew to be a strong Peter, to be indeed an icon of Moya's family, and also Kiriri's family. And for the last 50, more than 50 years, I have known them, and I have known Leah, I have seen her becoming a pillar of those two families. I want also to add that I know she was the strength, she was the power behind TK. She gave TK space to be innovative, to explore, and to invest where he was investing. And he sh TK, I knew he was accompanied by, this, by the prayers of this particular warrior. Mama Jerry was a, a woman of great value, a woman of great strength, a, a woman of great values, which she inculcated in her children. And I can see the same thing happening to her grandchildren. These values will live on. She is gone, but these values will live with us. And she has left major memories which we shall cherish for many years. She was a woman of means, but she was a modest lady. All of you know how modest she was in her lifestyle, in the way she presented herself, in the way she welcomed people in her house. She was a woman with a lot of empathy. She would meet a young woman in uh, Mombasa and uh, link up her to education. She was a woman of great empathy. I want to conclude by saying there's one thing which she was very, very strong. She built friendships. She built relationships. She opened her house for many people to come in to build a relationship. And I'm one of those people who she opened her house to. She built a relationship. She built friendship, and her, her hospitality built many friends. She believed in friendships. She believed in strong relationship, and she, these relationships were anchored in God's word. I want to say she made her house a house not only of prayer, but a house for building relationship, for building lives, and for bringing people to the glory of God. In conclusion, I want to say, Mama Jerry did not walk her journey alone. 
She walked with her church members. She worked with the women of Guild and other women from the rural areas. And she, in that journey of working with others, and working with the community, working in the country, because I know she used to pray for this country. And because she walked, did not walk alone, she walked very far in this country. And that's why we are here this afternoon to celebrate a lady of great strength, of great values, who loved this country, who loved God, and who loved her children, and in the process brought us closer to God and the glory of God be manifested in her life and it will continue. So I say, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, God is good. Another time. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Kiboro, and I have known TK since we were little children, way back in the 50s, maybe 1954 or earlier. But we are not that old, so we are bad <laughs> to I'm accompanied by my wife, Fatma, here, if you can stand and wave, who has also been a great friend of Mama Jerry. We knew uh, Titus and Mama Jerry before they were married, when TK was dating, and I was dating also this beautiful lady. Uh, we, were, we, were, we were converging in the hunting ground for bachelors. <laughs> and also, I see Mr. Karimi there. If you can stand and wave. Karimi was the best man in the TK's wedding, and so all the stories, but we'll tell those stories for another day. Uh, I feel greatly honored to have been asked to say a few words on this day. It's a difficult day for all of us because um, for somebody that you have known all your life and you have shared so many things together, we have been in holidays with Mama Jerry and TK all over the world, in Norway, in China, everywhere you can think about. But not only that, but also somebody who has been your confidant. It's very difficult to find way, you know, words to say at this particular point in time. But um, we are here, fellow mourners, to, uh, to gather here to thank God for the life of this great and extraordinary woman who lies here, Leah Wajiro Mamuya, or as many called her Mama Jerry. It is difficult for me to call her Leah. Todo Guiguata, Dramu Shinura. So, you know, when, when Jerry was born, you know, uh, we, we, we were so excited. You were so excited because we had been looking for this baby to come. And so, I get on you know, Jerry, So today, I can't, I can't call her there. It is very, it feels just odd to call her there because, you know, we know her as Mama Jerry. And this uh, beautiful lady also was called Mama, Mama Tony. Eh? I think working Nigeria and Keriri and Moya and all the Kahaki, they, they, they know her as Mama, Mama Tony. We are here to pay a tribute and to lay our last respects to Mama Jerry because I think she touched each and every one of us here in one way or the other, either directly, indirectly, or even through her friends, our ch children, or anybody else. And I think that's why we are all here. So the way she called Modo Tomagero Marua, my invitation, okay, Rodia Maviko. You come here because you feel there is a connection between you and the person that you have come to, 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 to escort. But uh, most importantly, why we are here, we are here to actually offer our prayers to Mama Jerry because that is the only thing we can do for her today. There is nothing else we can do for Mama Jerry other, to, other, to, other than to offer our prayers to God, to ask God to have mercy on her and to rest her soul in eternal peace. I know this is a very difficult period for this family. And I want to thank all us, uh, fellow mourners, because I've been asked to speak on behalf of the wider people who cannot have a chance to come here. The Family Bank Fraternity, where TK was the founder, like in the Kenya Orient, like in the Dekeo, and all the other institutions that this family have been involved in, 
the friends, many, many, many friends who are here have been asked to speak here on their behalf. I can't thank you enough for coming today to be with this family, to condole them, and also to send our, our, our sister and our, 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 our friend away. Thanks for coming and for standing and working with this family. It means so much to them, and they have asked me to express their greatest gratitude to you for doing that. For those of you who have lost a mother, and I lost my mother a few years ago, about three, four years ago, she was 97. I know how painful it is to lose a mother. And this thing doesn't really get to you until after we have all left and gone home. And then you find that that house is without a mother. It's a very painful experience and you can only just imagine what is going through the family together. And therefore, looking at TK, who has lost a partner of more than 50 years, Jerry, who has lost a mother, Moya, who has lost a mother, Kiriri and Kahaki, who have lost a mother, and also your spouses too, because she was also their mother, and your grandchildren. These are the people who really feel the greatest pain on what we are doing today, because they, they, she was really part and parcel of their lives. So to the TK family, please accept our condolences. We can only promise to continue to pray for your family, to continue with the friendship that we have had, and to ensure that, in fact, whatever Mama Jerry was, talk, uh, was doing continues to be done. Our condolences also go to Mama Jerry's siblings, and they are all here. Joseph Nyanjui, Rachel Airimo, Gatama, John Kemata, Sarah Gena, and Benjamin, and Bogwe and their spouses, and also their children. And also, not let's forget about the children of their late brother, uh, Samuel, who passed off a few, a few months ago. They too are paining. And I know the Kiriri family too, you are also hurting because you know Leah was a very special sister to you all and a special auntie and grandmother to all of you and I know you are hurting. So please also, may God walk with you. May they, they give you the, the comfort to be able to go through this. As I said earlier, we have known this family for over 60 years. And uh, it is very difficult for me now to, in the few minutes that I can see, the master of ceremony is looking at me because I have been tempted already um, to, 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 to describe uh, what, what kind of woman uh, this woman was and the legacy she leaves behind. We knew Leah when she was dating TK and uh, we were dating together. And uh, we had the good fortune that when TK finally became serious, you know, uh, we can now say it here that uh, Mama Jerry conquered this guy because he had been all over the place and we were actually getting quite, quite, quite concerned about him. <laughs> that uh, when, when is this guy going to? He's a little older than me by a year. And I got married before him. And I was, uh, the guy was just not looking very serious. But, uh, and, 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 and when Mama Jerry came in the scene, then we knew that uh, this is the right person for him. So when then we said, you know, let, let's, uh, we, we want you to have honorable intentions on this lady. So let us go to her parents and ask her hand in marriage. Me and this gentleman, Karimi, here, we were in that entourage to go and uh, ask uh, Leah's hand in marriage from the Kiriri, who was very nice to us. Because that time we were very thin, we looked malnourished, and we, I don't even know how he, he, he allowed us to in this home, but we had the courage, you know, and uh, to, 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 to take on that role. Um, so it's a long story, because even our children, we brought them together, they knew each other. They, they, we, it's a very long story and, and very painful one to, to talk to, uh, to talk about, because talking in past tense about Mama Jerry is just, very, very difficult to say she was. Because she has always been, and therefore to talk in past tense becomes very, very difficult. So what can I say about Leah? I think the word that I've heard here most for those who have spoken before me is just prayer, 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 prayer. 
prayerful woman that she was, a committed Christian. She was a good wife, and I can say that without any, uh, you know, fear of contradiction. She was a very good, good mother. Tough one to work in Moya because Moya was very, you know, he was all over, and uh, <laughs> and and uh, but she sorted them out. She sorted them out, and she really raised her children well. Yeah, she had epitomized simplicity. We we went with Leah all over the world. And uh, you would imagine, of course, TK is not a man of small means. You'd think she would go buying things all over the place. Other than the things she would buy for her grandchildren. So Leah would not even buy anything for herself. She, she was such a simple woman. She, she was driving a pickup. And we used to ask her, Leah, why are you driving a pickup? Why can't you have some decent wheels? You know, to, but, but you know, that was Leah for you. She, 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 wasn't, she wasn't interested in those material things. So humble and simple and everything that you can t talk about. But let me say one more thing about Leah. That she was a homemaker. If any, all of you who are married, if any of you can stand here and say that they have never had any problems or turbulence in their marriage, uh, can they raise up their hand here? Because I'll call them a liar. There is no marriage that doesn't go through some, some, some turbulence and so on. But I know when TK and uh, Mama Jerry were going through some turbulence, she, um, she, she held her family very firmly together and showed extraordinary degree of patience and maturity. And through prayer, she acted as an anchor to her family. So she was a real, she was a real uh, homemaker. And uh, her family always came first. Leah was kind and generous, as we have been told, hardworking and enterprising woman. She was prayerful. And uh, the, the thing about her is that um, even though TK is a man of means, she was not the kind of woman who would wait to, to, for TK to bring her things. She actually did things and, and earned her hard. So I want to say that um, the, the best thing that I really want to say about Mama Jerry is that uh, how she brought her children. Because I know these children. I have known them since the day they were born, every single one of them, Wakinanjeri and everybody else. But I can say this. Uh, if you know these children, they are, she has taught them very, very well. They are humble. They are courteous. They are respectful. And I think these are traits that I think they learn from their mother. So uh, I want to end by saying that um, we have had many tributes from the family and so on. And I think the people who knew her most are just her children. And what wonderful tributes that they had. We have heard about the many people she has helped and everything else. I can't repeat them. And also the role she played in her family and so on. And the community and particularly in serving God and maintaining and keeping friends of TK. Because there are many women who actually do not keep the friends of their husband. We are grateful to Mama Jerry because she has kept us all together. So what do I say to my friend? I say that uh, to Leah, you have worked hard, very hard. You have raised your family well. You have looked after your husband. And your work here on earth is done. And you have done a good job. So, although we mourn her because we loved her, uh, let us thank God for the many years that she was there. And I want TK and her, child and her children to, and, and I want to thank TK, particularly and her children, for really taking care of Mama Jerry. Because as you heard from Jerry, she has been unwell for 10 years. And I can say because I have been a visitor of that home for many, many times, that they really looked after Mama Jerry. TK did not spare any money or any resources to see that his wife was taken care of. He has taken her to the best hospitals in the world, but God's will had to prevail in the end. To my friend TK, I know uh, I have been tempted. To my friend TK, uh, I want to ask you, we are married here? We are married here? Stay strong. I'm sure 
prayers, prayers, all those years will continue to bring blessings to your family. To TK's children, Jerry, Moya, Kiriri, Kahaki, together with your spouses and your children, please understand that your dad is now alone. Please don't leave him. Please don't leave him. Eh? Be a constant visitor to his home. Visit him regularly because that is all he has at the moment. Mm -hmm. And lastly, to all of us here present, you have seen the, how, how Mama Jerry was uh, held in great esteem. The question I want to ask you, you, because one day we'll come to have a, an occasion like this for you, what legacy are you going to leave behind? Yeah? But even more importantly, will you be ready to make your maker? Let us purpose there for today to allow God to put up his tent in our hearts. That way, we shall see God and meet Leah and all our loved ones who have gone before us in faith when our time comes. So, Mama Drea, you have been a good and supportive wife to TK. We tell you, Kwaheri, and may God rest your soul in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you. All right, so now I'm going to request all of us to stand up and uh, TK will take a small break and then he'll come and make his final comments and then let's all stand up as the praise and worship says. Mambo sawa sawa Mambo sawa sawa Yes, we are
Gaja kido. Tiga ikuhe nania. Tiga ikuhe nania. Mother ni agosho. Now for those of you who don't know this song, it says ni kufrai ni kufrai. Wacha kudanganya. Ebu chali bute na nego. Yes, because it is his nature. You can all sit down. Thank you very much. First, I want to read some short tribute I have written here. That because you heard Mr. Kiboro say that I used to stray, I would stray a bit talking of the calf. I met her in the year 1967 when she was taking a course at the Kenya Polytechnic, I was immediately impressed and thought that maybe you had, I had met a lot of other people, but maybe I may have now found a partner. I had met a lot of other girls, so what Kiboro said is true, I had met a lot of other girls, but those that I met, I had already decided, before I even met them, I had already decided that I would marry in the year 1973. That's what Kibor forget to say. <laughs> and that is the date I had set genuinely when I was 30. I was going to marry in 1973 when I was 30. So I threatened every girl I met that if you want a relationship with me, you must be prepared to stay until 1973. Of course, a lot of them would go away. And so I moved on. When I eventually met Mama Gary, Jerry, I gave her the same message that I was going to marry in 1973 when I was 30 years old. For her, she did not appear scared. And therefore, I thought this was strange, a strange woman. She's not feeling scared that I'll marry in 1973, six years from now. We continue to date. And I'll keep on telling her, but you know I'll marry in 1973? She would be here. She ended up saying, if you are going to marry me, I'll wait for you. She still did not appear Dead. But then she continued telling me that, look, I was, I went to Capsabit Girls High School and I was the head girl. And you know, I was not very obedient in, to head, man, to, head to, to uh, prefects. So I started saying, now this one is going to come and control me. <laughs> so I had another reason, another reason why I was not going to marry her first. She, I don't know whether she's genuinely saying she can wait until 73, and now she was a head girl. So, we continued dating, and she continued saying she will wait for me if that's the day I want to get married. Then, I started feeling this must be a serious girl because she says she can wait for me. And then I noted that whatever we discussed, she was not behaving like other girls that met. And I will now tell you the reason why I thought of marrying in 1973 is because, again, of my family circumstances. I wanted to marry when I was 73 so that I can really settle my family my brothers and sisters, and my mother. But now I had found somebody who was prepared to wait, whatever the case. And if I may say this, now that she's gone, as I looked for a girl to marry, I did not tell my friends, Akina uh, Karemis, Akina uh, Kiboro, and others who have departed, known as Kamaria, John Moya Kamaria, 
I never told them that I wanted a slightly mature girl. And possibly, if older than me, because Because I was, it's like I was looking for a mother. Are we talking? So I did not marry an older girl. And Mama Jerry even told me, but you know, do you know I might even be older than you? And look, she did not know that that's the kind of thing I was looking for. I was, of course, hoping to get someone of my age exactly, but even a, a lady that is older than you by one year or two is still OK. And so, when she saw that I was also not bothered about her age, she loved me more and we bothered more. But the issue of having been a head girl continued bothering me. <laughs> because those who are my classmates know I was notorious in quarreling with the, with the prefects and the head boys and so on. And I was making a lot of nice noise in class. The information I'm giving you here, even Kibor did not know because you hear we are not in the same class. <laughs> so it also bothered me. But then her behavior, her demeanor, told me this could be the one I was waiting for. That's probably why I was talking of 73. Because all my, some of my friends, the one, the one I was staying in, in um, I was staying with, all married between 1967, between 1966 and 69. Akina Kamaria, Kiboro here married in 69. Uh, Daniel Wainaina here, Daniel Wainaina, are you there? He was my classmate. He married first in 1966. And I was still waiting, looking for somebody who is mature enough. And most of the girls that were visiting us were a little bit younger. And I felt I needed somebody mature. And I've told you why. The interesting bit is that when eventually married, when I eventually moved, started moving my dates of marriage from 1973, I came to 72, I could see her brightening up. <laughs> because I'm, I'm also now meeting her halfway. Then I moved further. Because I was getting impressed, 70, and then eventually settled on 70. So courtesy of her, I moved my date for of marriage forward from 1970 to 1973 to 1970. Interestingly, I mean, thank you for reminding me. Interestingly, when I married her, she hit the ground running by starting to do some of the things I had wanted to do, and that's why I was putting my mind off as much as possible. She started by giving me a home. How did she give me a home? First, we stayed at the Moria Estate. And then, immediately she got a job at KIA where we were given a hut, a house with two bedrooms. And immediately, when she was doing that, I was transferred to Namanga Immigration Control. And I now knew all the plans I had about my family, settling my family, and even taking my mother, taking care of my mother who was sickly then, would not work. But now she had gotten a job where she was given a, an, of, an official house to stay. Because she was a caterer, she needed to be housed at KIA. So what happened? When she got the house, surprisingly, she was more, more excited than me. So she said, look, now that you have, you'll be going and staying in Namaga, we shall not qualify what, what we call owner-occupied house allowance. So, now that I have got this house, it will be good because we, could, we shall end up not, not only staying there, 
but also inviting your mother to come and join us. So in this house in KIA, when I got transfer, when I moved out from Nairobi, we were able to rent out that house, a small house we had bought in Jamhuri, and we were able to pay for that mortgage because now we had free accommodation. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you reading me over? Yes. So we moved to that house. So we went to that house, and we had, she invited my mother to come and stay with us. But over and above that, because I'm talking life, life things, my sister Nancy Wajiko and Rachel had just completed high school and they were not employed. So they also came in and stayed there. I think when you, you can remember that Gatua and the Kelilis who can remember that. Do you remember that Najui? Were you there? He's out. Do you remember that? So they came and stayed there. But eventually, those two girls got their jobs, got employment, and they were slowly, quietly exited by Mama Jerry. I did not even know when they transferred from the house. <laughs> Why were they exited? In order to give room for my mother. And of course, they, came, they kept on coming to visit. And that was all right, because now they were settled. Now we had only my mother in the house. But then, life continued. And we were all growing in our professions. And we ended up having a bigger house. And in that house, I had the urology here, the, the tributes here being said that a lot of the Kiriris passed through there. But equally, and that is what they forgot, equally, we have also hosted members of our family, or from my side of the family, in our racial house for many years. I could quote that other than my mother, there was a certain lady, young fellow, I don't know whether she's here, her name is Jerry Wada Mueri. She had an accident and got burnt, and Mama Jerry admitted her to come and stay in the house, and she was sometimes taking her to hospital. I also remember Jerry Wagaiko. Jerry Wagaiko, are you here? She's there. She also lives with us. So it's not just the Kiri. You know, I don't want the people of Gataka to think that they themselves were not housed there. <laughs> <laughs> they were also housed by Mama Jerry. So the treatment, because even the people of Loresho might say, Oh, so she only housed the, her side of the house. No. She entertained and welcomed everybody. She welcomed everybody into our house. And so the relationships were created cut across my side and her side. I don't know whether I have lost my, my all up of the speech eventually. Now, as a wife, because I don't want, I cannot now read this because it has been covered. As a wife, she has been a very interesting wife. I think my children and all the cousins and everybody knows, and Kiboro has referred to it, that people when they're married, they keep on crashing. And the Kikuyu say, Madana Mweke Dokemwe, There are those things. And my children and the children from the Kiriris Family, I told them when we celebrated Mama Jerry's 50 years, Mama Jerry's, is it 80? No, yeah, not 80 years. When we celebrate her 50, the why this lady is truly great. It happens to a lot of people. This side, the other one, this side. I take a shower very quickly and want to go. I don't even want to eat her food. But what amazed me about her is all the She's not talking to me, 
but I've not talked. The following day, the food is again on the table. So I end up saying, now I bother the who are you? You say, I need to for you. Then the major thing, I think I have referred to this. She brought my mother home. And those of you who may have read the eulogy I had the, the tribute I had written here, soon after we married, she went and talked to her parents in Elbagon, and they invited, they invited my mother, who was then very sick, who was then sickly. She was once in a while living in a world of her own. And her parents invited my mother to go and stay in her bagel. And she stayed there until she herself wanted to move, to come to Nairobi and go to her Ataka home. But whenever I talk, I talk to her mother, she would tell me, why don't you bring your mother, let her stay with us. But of course I knew my mother would also not fit in there. In fact, even in our Rolesho home and even in KIA, she would not like to fit in. So she would come and stay with us in Kataka. Then Mama Jerry would find that she's not in good condition. She would go and pick her, bring her to Rolesho, and probably bring her, sometimes take her to hospital. So she has taken care of man, my mom. And she has given my mom a home. Until the end the, from the 1980s, from the end of 1980s and 90s, uh, my mom came and stayed at home permanently, and she is known by most of these um, women gives ladies. They know that she stayed at my home. But I want to say something else about Mama Jerry. Mama Jerry. Mama Jerry. It is the kindness you have had people talk about here. You know, I said people crash. She never started the crashes most of the time I started. <laughs> and even then, whenever we argued, she would not raise her voice. She would always be very, very, very calm. We could talk about prayers, and we could talk about being a prayer warrior. But you know a husband needs respect more than anything else so that he can have peace in doing what he wants. When I was running the organization, I hear she was told a lot of stories that TK is moving with a lot of women there. She has never come to the office of Family Bank to find out what I was doing. And most importantly, she never even wanted to visit Family Bank. She wanted me to be free to run the organization. And a lot of respect. I give her a lot of respect for that. I want to say something else. And this is a fact that at home here, you heard she was coming to remove something. Somebody mentioned it. Maybe I will repeat it in another way. That she used and joined women and they would cultivate the shambas. And then we will have, we, we, we have, we, we farm tea. When she went to Ataka for the first time, she found people picking tea. And she looked at them, what she was doing. You know, in Rogoro Kwao, where the high area, there is no majani chai. There is no majani chai. So ma this lady, Mama Jerry, looked at these people, the way they were picking tea, two leaves and a bud, two leaves and a, I've never been able to do it myself. And she decided she wanted to pick tea. So she asked some of the ladies to show them the leaves that are picked. And she started doing it. 
But within a short while, Mama Jerry was competing in picking the tea, the, the tea with the ladies who pick tea in our small holders in Gataka. So I still continue to go and find out how is Mama Jerry doing, how is the tea doing with my, from my people in Gataka, my relatives in Gataka. So I found myself being told, look, wewe, ulikuwa unajifanya sinaliba. Wewe kufanya kitu. Wacha bibi yako aendelee na kulima. Yeye jua anajua kulima. Akaenda kwa shamba anachukua majembe na anaima kama kama sisi. Akikuja akikuta kuna chuna chai, anakuja. Anachuna chai kama sisi. Those are the things I wanted to say about Mama Jerry. There is so much I can say, but I don't want to go beyond that. All I want to say is that I honor Mama Jerry, I honor Mama Jerry, and I honor her for as long as I live. She has been my wife and my partner for 53 plus years. 53 plus years. So what happened when she was in hospital, I think you have had, you have taken her to hospitals in India about three times. And hospital, Nairobi, Aga Khan Hospital, she has been there. She has been at uh, Aga Khan, at Nairobi Hospital. The last 10 days that she was in hospital, she went to hospital on the 6th of December and passed on on the 20th of December. But interestingly, when she was there, I decided that because during the day I may go and find out of people waiting and they did not want to interfere with the program, with the time, I would be going at 8 o'clock. So I used to go there at 8 o'clock in the morning before I went on my other calls. There would be very few people then waiting to see her. And in any case, since I was the husband, I was allowed to see her anytime. So I would go there, look at her, and surely noted that my wife was going. Then I would go the following day and noted she's really going. Then I started wondering, this lady, what happened? I started, my memory went back to 1989. Maybe I should go back a bit and say, I became diabetic in the year 1981. And for two or three years, I managed my diabetes. But in 1985 and 1990, I started mismanaging my diabetes and had a few challenges where Jerry and her mother had to take me to hospital when I was unconscious. When I shared that with some people, some people told me, look, you know, by the way, when you are diabetes, you are going to go away very soon. You better start preparing. And I really believed it. So I went and shared that with Mama Jerry. You know, when you are married, you share everything. I told her, look, now that you know I have had these two or three situations when you and Jerry have taken two hospitals, one I'm unconscious, uh, I've now been told that's possible I may be going away very soon. You know what I mean by going away very soon. <laughs> and she told me, no, you are not going to go anywhere. Are you hearing me? Yes. I feel like you are not hearing. Yes. You are hearing. Yes. She told me, look, you are not going to go anywhere. And I am going to pray. You are not going to go anywhere. Then the message I'm giving, I actually believed that I was going to go ahead of her. And there I believed. And even before, I think men always plan, they might go ahead of their wives. But she embarked on prayers, and every evening she would pray. Sometimes I would leave her praying that TK be given long, a, long, a long period of life, and that the family continue to live together, me and her live together as, a, as husband and wife. 
Sometimes I would leave her praying. You know, it's good to admit. <laughs> she was, she's praying and I got to sleep. So she continued to pray. Later on, I ended up my, being able to manage my diabetes. And for, that, for 40 years, it has not taken me away. But despite that, yes, you can clap if you want. <laughs> but for 40 years, I managed it. But then to my surprise of surprises, all those years, Mama Jerry was not getting sick. She only went to hospital four times, and maybe one other incident when she went to Aga Khan on a small problem that she had. She was not getting sick. So when I was in hospital, I started asking myself, how did it happen that it looks like Mama Jerry who may go ahead of me? And I went over the motions, bothered and frustrated. And it came to a time when I started feeling maybe I overworked her. Because of all these calls, these calls we are hearing that she was involved in, apart from the church, were actually heavy. I started feeling, could I probably have overworked her? And then these responsibilities have given her too much pressure? And I started finding myself kind of apologizing to her, although she was not hearing. I felt so bad. Four days before she passed on, the doctors called us to tell us her condition and that they were giving her the best medicines possible, the strongest medicines possible, available in Kenya. And without any improvement on her, and so they have called us to tell us so that we can understand. And they told us, if you want us to continue giving her this, as this, her these medicines, we'll continue, but it's only for a few days. And then in any case, it's of no use because the, the conditions she has, she seems, are irreversible. So when we came out of that brief from the doctors, we tried to decide with my children what we wanted to do. And none of us was prepared to come out and say, let us trigger the bullet. We decided to go and think about it. You can see how we are holding her. We never wanted to release her. We had to take a few days before we gave the doctors authority to release her because she was, the, uh, she was diabetic, she was hypertensive, those two conditions were controlled by dementia, Alzheimer's, and the other one was not controllable. The liver was getting cancerous and medicines she's getting were not effective because of her other conditions. And therefore, she had reached a situation where the process was actually irreversible. But we still decided to hold for a few more days. But fortunately, after we sat, after two or three days after that brief by the doctors, we found that we were all aligned that let us not frustrate the doctors because the doctors had actually reached the end of what they thought was good for her. We all talked in one voice and said, after all, if the doctors were even to withdraw the oxygen, she was on oxygen, um, she was on oxygen given, being given by the doctors. So if left alone, she could not, not have breathed on her own and survived. So he said, if even after, if even the oxygen was withdrawn, she would die, and then the other medicines are also not working, then we use the same word that the doctors use, then you are embarking on a futile exercise. And that's how Mama Jerry ended up passing on. We had to release her. The only thing we asked the doctors is, we don't want her to be in pain. So she did not die in pain, but we had to agree that even the oxygen be withdrawn and whatever other medicine she was getting, because her condition was irreversible. That is the position, ladies of the guild, we wanted to do that. So on that note now, 
I want to end up by saying thank you very much to all of you who talked. I did appreciate you. I also appreciate me and my family. We appreciate you have all come to this funeral and we shall forever be grateful to you. With those few words, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, pastors, for presiding over this function. Thank you. Our Father who art in heaven, Amen. Thank you, TK. That's very important for healing. When you share, when you talk, it's important. Sometimes people wonder why do we allow the family to take all the time in doing that. It's important for the family to do it so that they heal. That's the importance of the tribute. So that you speak, you speak, you speak until you heal. That's why we're not in a hurry. I know when I was asked what time for the funeral, and I say 10.30, somebody say that's too early. I told them this is not going to be a short funeral. Are we together? <laughs> It's not going to be a small, short funeral, so let's begin early. Can we agree that with Kiri? Let's begin early, uh, because we knew it will not be short. It's going to be long. By the way, there are funerals I go to. We are ministers. I've been minister for many years. And sometimes a funeral takes just about two hours. You even try to look for things to do, so that it doesn't end very early. But this is where you have to <laughs> uh, wait. And thank you very much, MC, also for that. Now we want to take this moment to ask the family to do a presentation. They have a song. It's time for that song. Uh, we do not want to pray later. I want to sing later. I want to sing now. Then the ladies of the guild, uh, Loresho, will be doing the singing so that when you do the singing, you do the singing plus the Madaga ceremony. So the family members, you have a song. Who is the choir master of the family? Rachel. Rachel is the choir mistress of the family. So please, Rachel, Unless you stand, the rest will not stand. That's what happens with the choir mistress. So, family members stand here. If you can't sing, just Rurumelia. Rurumelia is just, uh, mm, you know, humming at the back. Eh? So, all the family members can come in front. So allow them to do that presentation. Then, Loresho, you will be following suit. Right, I think the choir mistress, you can begin the song as the rest just keep joining in. I knew how I'm going to talk to you. I knew how I'm going to We will join you in. Oh, how I'm Ne wa mwa da ni jeso ni ge ne wa hinyama oto togoragia na ma odo moru mageto kuheria jeso ne we mohoti. Wago to gitera Hede amagerio Newe moto teithia Toge moka erama Nego to honokia Modo mwe hokete Dage aga go kena Todo hori wake Yom wana gya jera Toga wade no Tita kyoro jega No ugya na mwadhani Ure hagya wa 
gotoria umaga kwe mwadani Amen. Amen. Irio sha kwa irio de aga mai maria nyuaga ona guo sha kwe hu basio de nove ohe aga mo yo na guo ne we wa he ire ni we o gira gya gwe. Oh, get the wa kudi ge karaga da kamwe we mo denya ona otu ko ne o me nya gere ra we gam mai do ma ku ne ma barak. Kore o deri na kore duma Dige hota gogo soker ya wega waku mwadhani None dako haya toma gegwe de muno na goigu age Amen Thank you mmepambana kweli family ya mmeimba mbili hata kama ungetaka tatu tuwape unajua hii ni siku yenu Thank you Loresho Who is our choir mistress or master And it's not just the women's guild all members of uh, Loresho please come forward yes you are here members of the worship team why are you here and the team I can also the the see her so who will do that one of you can my wife is looking at me like you are the choir mistress <laughs> ah yeah well, i hear we are singing our yeah. water fellowship
secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Thank you. We can have our seats. I'll be left with the officials of the Women's Guild. And I did not introduce my wife. And now that she's near me, I will introduce her and give her the opportunity to say hello. Praise God. Uh, my name is Sarah Karanja. I am born again. And I just want to say something very small, Reverend, if you can allow me. About 13 or 14 years ago, while well, Reverend was serving at St. Andrews, uh, I got an opportunity. He tagged me along uh, the uh, pilgrimage, Egypt-Israel pilgrimage, and Mam Lea was together with us. I didn't know her. I got to meet her then. And as, as we were preparing to, do the, to go for the pilgrimage, there's one thing that w I was fearing, doing, walking, uh, climbing Mount Sinai. So uh, the people that know Reverend, he's from the land of champions. He's, he's very fit. He's good at that. So when we, the morning that, the night that we were going to go up Mount Sinai, I don't want to say that Reverend left me or the team that was with him, but <laughs> well, I am, so that's, uh, he's saying that's the truth. So at some point I was feeling I'm struggling, walking. I don't know what I'm going to do. And apparently she came and told me, don't worry, I am going to walk with you. So she gave me a walking stick, and as you go up, you also need a torch. Uh, fortunately, I had one. Then I kept asking her, how comes you are able to work and I'm not able to walk? And she would tell me, I walk in my farm, I, I walk in the morning, I walk in the evening, so I'm able to walk. So we walked, it's like about a journey of five hours, and uh, when we reached the last station, then from the last station, you do like 750 steps so that you go where... Uh, the, where Moses was given the Ten Commandments. At that point, I told her, I am not moving. Please go and leave me. You will find me here. She told me, I told you I'm not going to leave you. We shall sit here, wait for the other team. So she, she bought me some, uh, some cocoa to, 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 for me to get some strength. She encouraged me. And I felt that was a very kind person. And when I asked her who she was, she never told me. So and then after that, uh, Reverend was transferred from St. Andrews. So when she passed on, he came with the photo and told me, I have lost one of my members. And I told him, this is the lady that helped me when we were doing, doing Mount Sinai. So one thing I learned from her is kindness. God bless you. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, ladies yes. of the guild. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, church. Um, we are representatives of the Women's Guild, Loresho uh, Parish, and uh, I'm going to first read the condolence message from our chair lady, Damaris Waiganjo, who is not with us today. My name is Jane Mwangi. The PCA Loresho Women's Guild was born out of a ladies group that was started way back in 1977 by several ladies, amongst them um, Mrs. Damaris, Muraithi, who is with us today, Mrs. Mary David, the late Mrs. Mary Getonga, the late Mrs. Lucy Mbogua, Mrs. Uh, Sarah Gashao, Mrs. Purity Njao, Mrs. Virginia Madenge, the late Zipora Miano, and our dearly beloved Mrs. Leah Wanjiro Moya. This group was uh, begun by Mary Getonga and was supported by the Women's Guild of St. Andrew's Church and we truly appreciate their persistence and effort. Having been started off in 1977, in 1986, uh, our Heavenly Father in his mercies answered the prayers of these ladies, and the women's uh, group in Loresho was transformed into the Women's Guild, where Lea Muya served as the treasurer in the earlier years. The women of the guild in Loresho have witnessed her love for God, which has been demonstrated by her dedication to the guild activities and her enrollment in the Bible Study Fellowship, which we heard about, BSF, so that she could gain a deeper understanding of God's word. She was indeed a role model, as the Women's Guild Constitution asks us to be. Even when she was unwell, she endeavored for many years to attend church services and the Women's Guild activities, which she also contributed financially to 
up to today, and she's up to date with all her records. The Women's Guild is about fellowship, about prayer, and about service. And Leah did not waver in giving service, in fellowship, and in prayer. Upon receiving news of her passing, the ladies of the Women's Guild have shared multiple condolences, and I will sample just uh, two of them. One says, I celebrate the life of my hero, Leah Muya. She was a very dedicated woman of prayer who had a burden to pray for the Church of Christ. She was kind, calm, and very self-controlled. Her dedication was amazing. She was not judgmental, but resolved everything by prayer. Komadayo Leah wa Muya, not Okonana. And a second one, to the Moya family, the Lord, whom you and your families have served diligently over the years, is with you and will continue to uphold all of you. He will strengthen you and see you through this difficult period in, the, in, the, in Jesus' precious, mighty name. May God, our great comforter, visit the Moyas and grant them peace. May this gallant soldier of Christ rest in peace. In closing, May her memory be a source of comfort and inspiration to you as a family. And we quote Psalm 34, verse 18, which says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. May her soul rest in eternal peace. We also have a message from our church headquarters, which our chair will read. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Um, I want to read the message of condolence. Uh, from the Women's Guild de Department at the PCA office. Uh, but before I read, I want to just say one word. I serve as the Vice Chair of the Women's Guild. And uh, we have walked a good journey with Leah, a committed member, a lady whose memories live on. The reason why you see this blue and white is because of her initial initiative together with the other ladies. And we are forever grateful for that. She has been a faithful member, serving with the other ladies. But we want to thank God for the many years that he gave, he gave Leah to us, 82 years, and all the things she did. And in summary, I just want to quote Second Timothy 4, about seven to eight, the Leah has fought the good fight. She has finished the race, and she has kept the faith. May she rest in peace. Now I'll read the condolence message. Um, yes, to the family of Leah Wanjiro Moya. We in the office of the Women's Guild have received with sadness and with acceptance to God's will the passing on of our sister in Christ, Leah Wanjiro Moya, who was a Women's Guild member in PCA Loresho Congregation, Loresho Parish, Milimani North Presbytery. We send our sincere condolences to the family, together with the Women's Guild fraternity during this difficult time and pray that God of all comfort be with you now and, and in the days ahead. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, uh, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That comes from Philippians 4, 6. Yours in Christ service, Reverend Elizabeth Kimani, Director, Women's Guild. And our motto is, whose I am, is who I serve. And indeed, she served her master. Amen. Praise be to God. Thank you very much, Women's Guild. We now want to request uh, TK, with all due respect, to come over here and your children so that we give you what we call the Madaga Malaya, so that every time you see them in the house, you remember whose she is is whom she served. Thank you. Um, good afternoon once again. Good afternoon. The Women's Guild um, is a group within the Presbyterian Church of East Africa that unites the young ladies and the women 
in service for God. Uh, before one becomes a guild member, you have to serve as a follower for two years. And after you are commissioned, you have to serve for another year before you are a full member and you get your badge. Leah was committed, and uh, here we have the ordinances of the Women's Guild that uh, she received during her service. We have her certificate, which she got when she was uh, commissioned. commissioned as a Women's Guild member. And a year later, she got her badge as a full member of the Women's Guild. And like our chair lady has said, she has served faithfully. I will hand this over to our chair lady, who will pass on to the reverend for him to pass to the family. Our reverend, with all humility, I want to present to you this ordinance of Leah Wanjiro Moya to hand over to her family for their memory of the good works their mother did in serving the Church of Christ and to remind them of the virtues that she upheld. Amen. Because um, yeah, she looks younger, TK. Uh, this is when she became a member of the Women's Guild. This was 19, at St. Andrews, actually we, we even had to get a card that is even more recent. <laughs> Yes, that was like about how many years ago? Demaris Moridi, 80, 77 is when you came to Loresho. Yes, 75 is when you moved in, but 77 is when you came to start at Loresho. Th thank you. So you can talk, uh, we are talking about 40 something years ago is when she became a member of the Women's Guild. I pray that the younger members of the Women's Guild will not be tired. Those of you that are even only under 40. <laughs> and uh, our prayer as we hand over this to the family is that uh, someone, we just hope somebody <laughs> will become a member of the Women's Guild, or is it Mrs. Kiriri, or is it Mrs. Moya, one of them, eh, that will become a member of the Women's Guild. Would love to see you in church, would love to see you come in to serve God. Your mom served PCA Loretta with a lot of dedication. You all know how much she loved coming to church, praying in that church. May you come and follow suit. No, even do better. Moya, Kanebe, PCMF. Thank you very much. So we hand it over this one to the family. Thank you. When you put it in the house, let it remind you who she is as you put it somewhere in the house. Thank you. Thank you. We will all be upstanding so that we can pray for the family. Yes, stay here. Lord God, we thank you for your loving kindness to us. We thank you for the ministry of Leah. Even as now the family receives her ornaments, O oh Lord, as they see them in the house, let it inspire them to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We can have our seats. Family members, we only leave the Women's Guild members standing. Uh, you know, when a soldier goes, normally the officers will have some gun salutes. So there is also that gun salute by the Women's Guild in honor of their fallen soldier. Okay. Ah, yeah. The chair lady says you come here so that you can give her the energy to be able to sing the Riborowako. And of course, you know, this is not just from racial, any member of the Women's Guild, as long as you have your uniform. Uh, we go now. You can surround the, you can surround the body. The usual. And you sing. Ta 
ne renoi tui tui ke ya go ko go si dia adoi tu ma ko menye we ga wa ma we mo ya mo he ani to he age hi nya to hi ge me he to e ria to e ti re na re to ria ga i wi to Atene ture hu jagiagu moyaku To to gorie will there Rigoi to toare Kia wera to Kepo Shie o shio wa igo Amen. Thank you, members of the Women's Guild. We will now a moment of giving. In case you didn't have the opportunity to do your contributions, uh, for this and the giving we to give is for the family. So we have a Loidaka is still in the house. You can help me with that if you're in. Thank you. The offering, Mrs. Kamau. We have the basket ready. Thank you. You can bring them on so that the members of the Women's Guild can help with the offering. And then El Loidaka can commit that to God in prayer. In the meantime, the worship team can give us some music as we do, as the members of the Women's Guild help us with the collection of the offering. There is a pay bill also we were using, so if again you can be able to be displayed, it can be displayed.
We come. And, and if the offering basket is not where you are, you can bring your offering into any of these. Is that what you're saying? You Yes, we request a PBIL number. We had one time this, so you can put it there for us. You can take us, please, if you have ring offering, do it so that we have a few minutes to do that.
Okay. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. King of glory, we thank you for you are the source of all wealth. You are the giver of all good gifts. And in this moment, we thank you for these gifts that have been brought. We pray, Lord, a blessing upon all those who've been able to give and who've come and given not just of their wealth, but of their time and of their care towards the Muya family. And we pray a blessing upon each one of them. I pray, Father, for all the other activities in this service, that you would be glorified in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We may have our seats. We may have our seats as I invite the Bible readers uh, to read for us. We have Genesis 15, 1 to 6. And then we have John 14, 1 to 6. So the Bible readers, please uh, go ahead and help us with that. A portion of scripture, Genesis 15, 1 to 6, and John 14, 1 to 6. Go ahead. Genesis 15, 1 to 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness, the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, our second reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, uh, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know where, you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, and that's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, thank you very much. Now we want to sing a preparatory hymn to hear the word of God. We are honored once again. I want to mention to have the Reverend Dr. Robert Wehenya, the Secretary General of the PCA Church, with us today, he's the one who will be sharing the word of God. I know the program writes Karaja. Karaja was me, is me. Uh, but today, I am privileged to have uh, Reverend Dr. Ihenya with us. He's the one who will be breaking the bread of life. And we are grateful and thank you for coming to be part, uh, to be with us, even in time of mourning. 
And again, we say thank you, TK and the family, for giving us the opportunity to have had known there. Now we are going to sing a song. And this is Kikuyu. Tigawali Mwena Wakwa. Now you have to kupambana with this until you sing. So Tigawali Mwena Wakwa worship team, do you know how to go about this? Yeah. Ah, great, because I don't want to ask Elder Widaka to lead this. Eh? Ah, yeah, worship team, you are there? Yes, Tigawari Mwena Wakwa. We can all be upstanding as we usher in the man of God to minister. Tigawari Mwena Wakwa. Worship team. Tigawari Mwena God our Father, you who is our great comforter, you who is our friend and our Father, we come before thy presence as we thank you, dear Lord, for whom you are, O oh dear Father. In every season, O oh God, you remain as our Father, and if, even this season when we are mourning our dear Mom, O oh dear Lord, we say you are our Father. You never change, and you shall never change. And therefore, God, we pray that... Uh, as you've been with us, even for the short time that we are going to sit and listen to your word, Father, may you come with the power and clarity that you may comfort each one of us, O God Almighty, and more so, may you comfort this family so that they will have a good purpose and uh, will to move on from here, O mighty Father. Now speak to all of us and use me for this, this we pray 
in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen. Amen. We have our seats. <clears throat> I greet all of you. It's okay. I want to greet all of you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I've been mentioned several already, and I want to uh, repeat my name. And I was really surprised to see somebody being called in the program, being called by my name, uh, because it is a rare name. When I was born by my mom, the name I was given was Wakahora. That is my real name. But my father 